to I am um, recording, by the way. I'm it might be interesting to do one of the CNCF projects at some point okay. too, because they remember that JSON file that I sent you during the common mm. working yep. group that actually has, um, it has gender in it, for example, um, okay. just thinking of it from a base level diversity and inclusion. Um, but do they have, doesn't CNCF have the dev stat stuff? They or do. They have, they have dev stats. Yeah. Okay. Would we, would you think that we could possibly pull that? I guess I'm thinking more of a DNI report than a okay. overall chaos, everything report. Well, maybe, maybe we kind of split it up. Maybe we start kind of reaching out to folks say at CNCF to do a DNI report. We just actually take the time to do it over the course of a year. Um, and then maybe say for Zephyr, we would offer to do it. I don't know if Zephyr even has meetups that they could kind of collect some of the DNI stats that we have at the moment, um, but maybe offer it more broadly as well. You know, like risk and value and DNI and all those things. Why, why did we start talking about the Zephyr project as one of the I just, I, it was only because Kate has expressed interest in the work that we're doing in the past. It was only for convenience purposes. <laughs> and she's been a participant in, and obviously being on the board and kind of being our Linux Foundation connection, it would probably be a e relatively low bar for trying to get engagement. That's all. Okay. Now that makes sense. Oh, they have good. a hackathons and meetups page, but it's not updated recently. Okay. But I think my overall thought was just being a little bit more proactive as a community to try to put these metrics in practice for folks to demonstrate what can be done. So on that note, hmm. uh, at the Open Source Summit North America, I talked with uh, who is the lead on Linux Foundation events? Angela, probably. Angela. Yeah. Yes. And she was uh, willing to schedule a meeting with us to go over our metrics and figure out which ones we want to start collecting for the Linux Foundation events, or just start with one event, and start telling a DNI story for the um linux foundation events that would be That's great option we have as well I mean, that makes <laughs> that makes a ton of sense to me yeah we'll have to maybe send out a when is good because she is in a different time zone hawaii okay. time zone and we'll have to figure out what time works she okay. cannot join our regular calls, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. So that sounds great. I I would like to be part of that conversation. Thanks for doing that. Oh yeah, of course. That's the proactive part, right? <laughs> I have another one here in a moment. Okay. Yeah, cause, right. Because I think if we just wait for people to pick these up, we might wait forever. <laughs> especially on some of the DNI metrics. So just thinking about ways to get it out there. That's awesome, thank you. Okay. okay Nicole. I will take on the action item to send in a Wednesday or a doodle. Hi, Nicole, I saw you joined. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Um, okay, I have another thing. At the opens, at the Chaos Con, Gris Cuevas from the ASF gave a lightning talk about her DNI efforts at mm -hmm. ASF. And one thing that is top of her mind right now is running a survey across the overall ASF ecosystem. And as part of that effort, 
there is ideas to use chaos questions to reuse questions from their last survey, which they ran in 2016. And an idea that we've been discussing as well is to ask what other surveys have been run in the recent years across different communities to see if there are other questions that we can um, reuse or get some comparable metrics. So the point is that one thing I want to start doing is collecting a list and maybe we can put this somewhere in our DNI working group of survey instruments that have been used in open source. Around DNI. Yes. So there were a couple things in there, I think. One was you had mentioned that she was interested in using chaos questions. Yes. Is it the like the questions that the metrics would be aimed at? Or is it a different set of questions? Like when I think questions, I think goal question metric. Right. And then when we go down to the metric level in DNI, we have survey questions. Oh, oh, okay. Those. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So items, maybe survey items. Okay. I got you. Um, so how, uh, that's, did she mention which ones in particular? We haven't gotten that far yet. That's okay. a conversation for next week or the week after. So okay. this survey project, if all goes to plan, should start next week or hopefully next week, yeah. And the, do you know what the goal of the survey is to understand DNI better across ASF projects? Yeah, to understand where they are currently and to identify levers for um, for improving okay. the uh, ecosystem. So and is it, you know, if it's project by project or if it's just kind of across the entirety? So the instrument itself still needs to be shaped. Uh -huh. And then one thing Chris is thinking about having a question early on saying, hey, where do you participate at the ASF? What project? And then provide all of your answers for that specific project. And so we can get data on the project level. Okay. Okay. Um, do you know what our timeline was? Yes. Uh, this, so survey development should be done by next month. And uh -huh. then Chaos or oh, Apache Con is at the end of October, and during that time should be the survey open. Okay. And there is a, a mailing list, an Apache DNI mailing list, where all this will be discussed. But I, I will keep posting here on the Chaos DNI mailing list as well to keep us in sync to have some cross pollination. That's at least my goal and why I'm super interested in this conversation. Do you think the LF would have any interest? Probably, yes, I've been talking to Shubra. I don't know who that is. She is a Linux kernel fellow. Shua. Shua, yes, Shua. sorry, Shua. Um, She's been on the call a few times. Yep. Yeah. So she is very interested and she already shared her survey last time, last week, not two weeks ago. So I know there's some interest at DLF as well. I don't know who, are you thinking about anyone specific? No, I actually don't know who does that kind of stuff mm -hmm. at the LF. I know Shua has been doing it like in the kernel community. Yep. But across all projects, I don't know. Want me to try to find out? Yes, that would be great. I know when Sarah was joining our call, she had mentioned, and we can go back in the minutes and find out, but there were no names when I looked back. Okay. 
Sarah had mentioned that the LF is putting together a survey instrument to be used across projects. Yeah, I'm trying to think. But I don't know that I... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, when I was at the Open Source Summit, I could not find anyone who had any updates on that project. Okay. I'm trying to think if I've ever filled out a survey like for the Linux Foundation other than like post-conference questions. Yeah. I think they have some demographic questions when you submit talks. Right, but I don't think I've ever seen anything like just come out like on a Tuesday yeah. that says if you're as, as a as a member of the Linux Foundation, I don't even know what that would mean, but as somebody who has participated in Linux Foundation events or something along those lines, please take a second to fill. I don't think I've ever answered something like that. I've done surveys for projects themselves, you know, and they send it out to the project mail lists. Okay. I'll see what I can find. Yeah. So I'll just start going back to the DNI survey instruments. I'll just start a Google Doc and oh. share the list and invite everyone to add any surveys that they are aware of. Actually, Matt just shared. I'll put it in here. See that? Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they also have some, evalu uh, some evaluation and registration for training surveys. That's about it that I could find. Okay, so clearly they do this. Do they, uh, you're, maybe you've already said this, but do they also have plans to publish the re results in a report of some sort? So they, so we're talking about that they have plans to do a a survey across the community is, is there um, did you get from her is there a, a plan to actually publish a report about the, the results when they're ready I'm not a hundred percent positive my assumption okay. is yes there will be a report okay yeah but I don't know for sure about when and where and how and what will be published. Got it, okay. Okay, so the surveys that Matt shared, I don't think any of them are really DNI related. Oh no, I th the point was is that they do run them. That was it. Yeah. At least that's how I took it. Oh, did you all see the um, to-do group survey um, responses are public? No. They put them in uh, their GitHub repo. Um, I don't think there were any DNI questions in the to-do group survey that they posted was more about, are you doing it for your company? Are you getting paid for your contributions? That kind of questions. But the, the results are in their raw form available. I see that. So, and they're still working on the report and analysis, but it's public data, I guess. So if anyone wanted to work with this, It is available. Okay. Nicole, do you do you know what happened with the or Don with the to do group uh, stuff that was going on with that? Remember their shared document that they had? I think Nicole yeah. was doing that. Yeah, I do. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, they're still, um, they're not, uh, so there's been a lot of input 
on the document. Uh, they're not, there's not consensus on uh, publishing it yet. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the short, short that's, of it. It's, there's that's not fair. consensus on publishing it yet. Okay. Yeah, I saw that Gil had some reservation based on past experience with a code of conduct. Yes, there, there yeah. Okay, so still a work in progress at the moment. Yes. Okay. And then I have to drop off here, but I did have one more question. If I could go back in the minutes for just a second. Don, you had mentioned a potential project at CNCF for doing maybe a DNI report. Yeah, I mean it was just a it was just a suggestion. I because I oops, um, sorry, I'm knocking things over in my office. Um, only because I I do know that they have a JSON file which has like employer information and gender. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not and and it has like a gender confidence number. Um, and because the CNCF events are under the Linux Foundation, Angela might be able to give us. Um, information about event attendance for people from that project okay. from any of the CNCF projects. So it's just like, it was just kind of a random suggestion because I know that okay. there's some of the data that DNI would need available, but I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily know if that's, if that would be a good project to start with or not. Well, is there a particular project at CNCF that might be like a cool group of people <laughs> that would like this kind I, of I work on I work on Kubernetes. We're a cool group of people. Um, <laughs> it's also a massive project. Yeah. So and well Nicole does some work on Kubernetes too. So um, and yeah. I'd be willing to bet <laughs> that we could cool. get I bet that we could get some support from Paris at Google um, for something like this. Yeah. Okay. But I think it would be a much bigger effort than Zephyr. It might be better to start with something like Zephyr and see okay. how that goes, especially given that we have, we have Kate who can, who's been involved in the project and kind of help us yeah. maybe iron out the issues a bit before we test it on a bigger project with people that we're not as familiar with. Okay. I mean, because part of, part of this is obviously to provide value in a report for the community, but then obviously there's going to be a lot of pressure put on the metrics and a lot will be revealed and maybe a smaller project is a better place to do that. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, I'm just echoing what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, I do have to drop off because I have a 10 o'clock that I have to go. CNCF already has a report that they put out yearly. A DNI not, report? Not necessarily a DNI, just the report. Yeah. See, I was, I was thinking more from a DNI perspective. Um, be because that's the kind of report that they don't have for the CNCF projects. Um, but I also think we should prototype maybe the, the idea of doing this on a smaller project. Yeah. Yeah, I had uh, talked with Dan Korn in the past um, and he, he was open to working with us as well on feedback on the report or advancing the report with Chaos Insights. So we can always reach out to him as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'd be a good person to start with. Okay, those are, I already got all of my, my items discussed that I had in, on mind. Okay. Well, um, this is just uh, wanted to let everybody know that when I was at ChaosCon, I did record all but a couple of sessions when we were in the tutorial session, and and uh, Emma took notes for me in the ones that I missed. Um, so I am working on a. Um, comprehensive blog for ChaosCon that I am um, aiming to, uh, to have uh, available first draft this week.
Cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Happy to review that and provide feedback if you want feedback. Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, that was just a heads up that it is uh, going to be coming through soon. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so whoever would like to review that, please. I, I'd love the input. Yeah. That's good. So one thing, unless anyone has anything else, one thing on my mind is that we haven't done any work on advancing our metrics in a while. And I know we had some good input during the ChaosCon work groups. And I thought it might be good to use the remaining 30 minutes to review what has come through and maybe collaboratively polish one metric from the workshop. Sounds good. Yeah. Which one would you like to work on? Um, any one of the three. I don't know if you have a preference for one to work on. Maybe Don, maybe you have an idea. No, I don't have a specific preference. Okay, then let's do onboarding. Nicole, are you on a computer where you can edit the Google Doc with us? Yes, I am. Okay, we're gonna do onboarding, issue 121. Okay. So one of the first thing um, might be removing the disclaimer, or should we leave that until we publish it? I know we removed it for all of the um, released. I'm just going to remove it. Done. So questions, there are four questions here. I have not read them yet, but either there are different things and we should have different metrics or we should focus on one question. Sorry, I'm still getting to the doc from from my other computer. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm on okay, the okay, I'm there. Okay, it's in our repository issue 121. Yep, that's how I got there, I just typed that in. Um, oh yeah, so I remember when we did this in the, um, in the workshop, we, we didn't make it much further. So we spent a lot of time on the question and we just were brainstorming different types of questions to see if we could find the one that we liked the best. And, and we brainstormed on this for so long. We were like, and, and we kind of, uh, I guess we'd call it rat holing at Intel. I don't know if that's a generally acceptable term, but we basically dove so far deep into the questions that we didn't think we were getting anything else done. So we abandoned them as is because we couldn't decide and then we moved down to like work on some other things. So that's, that's why there are a whole bunch of questions. It was because we, we were being indecisive um, and trying to find the one that we liked best. I like the notes that are on the question. So they make both a um, note about governance and the one about the scope makes sense to me. I was just looking at that too, and um, uh, it's kind of interesting because I would think that having a structured or automated way, well, well having, having a concerted way or a, a structured way to welcome new folks and include them would actually be part of, a, part of an onboarding plan. Sh 
I mean, rather than governance, but mm -hmm. I don't I think both make sense because it's kind of a cross pollinated question. Yeah. Yeah, I think the one thing that I didn't like about this question um, was that it's, it's very binary. Does it have this or not? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, I don't know. What about something like how structured is the community's um, way? how structured or automated, or something like that, like how, put it on kind of a scale instead of um, having it just as a binary question. I, yeah, I and, I, that too. and I think this is maybe the first question that we started from, and I think the question at the top was the one that we thought was getting closer um, because it had it had a bit more in it. But the, the thing that I don't like about the first question is it's this big laundry list of, of things, how findable, inclusive, accessible, comprehensive, transparent, and welcoming is the process to onboard. Um, so that, that question seemed awkward too. We could use bullet points. Although I do like that first question. I think they're all really good questions. Um, I I put a fifth one, or now a sixth one, at the bottom, where I took the existing ones that we released and just replaced it with onboarding process and resources. Mm. Oh yeah, and you know what? The note about maybe moving this into governance because the question the question about this one was. Um, Onboarding itself is a rather big topic that isn't, so it, it does have an impact on diversity and inclusion. And I like your question about how, how the process and resources support diversity and inclusion, but whether or not we have an onboarding process and how good that onboarding process is goes way beyond diversity and inclusion. Right. Yep. So this is, this is, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it again, this is the core element of what we struggled with a lot in, the, in defining the question. Because we don't really have a separate focus area for, um, for onboarding in a project, but it is separate from DNI. It has a big impact on DNI. If your onboarding process is crap, um, your chances of getting, um, getting a diverse set of people feeling included is going to be harder right yeah so let's focus on the dni aspect though because mm -hmm. we have the dni working group um and we do have a governance um focus area and i think don't we i think we do yeah we do have governance where we have code of conduct for project and right now we have onboarding under leadership not under governance and leadership is its own focus area yeah it was less a comment about it belonging under governance and more a comment of the onboarding process probably belongs somewhere outside of dni but we just didn't really know where yeah I think a lot of our metrics have this component of mm -hmm. having this would be nice, and then we can dive into how it supports DNI. Yep. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So the, um, the idea here with having findable, inclusive, accessible, comprehensive, transparent, welcoming, maybe we can move that to our description or into our objectives. Where we say, say a good onboarding typically exhibits the following traits and having metrics around onboarding can help us identify how well we're doing with each of these traits. Mm 
That makes sense. I'm going to have to jump off in a couple of minutes because I have stand up um, in a yep. couple of minutes. Just so you know. All right. Any thoughts on the idea to move these different traits down to description or objectives? I think that makes sense. I still think we should have a question to, um, to determine, does it follow the traits of a good onboarding process as defined in this document or something like that? So are you, are you wanting a success metric? So when we go down, we do have specific metrics. Um, this goes back to an issue with how the DNI working group defines this page that we are on right now as a metric, but then really there it's a collection of different metrics later. Yeah, that makes sense. I see what you mean now. Yeah. And we do have contribution documentation score, which already has findability, inclusivity, accessibility, comprehensiveness. So we just need to add a few more. I think we this would go into a description. Are you saying, Georg, um, that the, with the question at the bottom, um, the very last question, is, is the proposal right now make that the question and then the question around does the onboarding process exhibit these following traits really makes, put that into the description? Yes, and I'm at the bottom of the description. I'm oh, right now. yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm gonna strike out the other questions for now so we don't lose anything. Yeah. And then I'm moving on to description unless anyone else has a comment about the question. Nothing for me. Okay. On to description then. I think this first one is out of scope for this metric. It's more about publicity and sharing than onboarding. Yeah. I mean, if anything, in you know, in that first sentence, feels like it's speaking to the importance of this um, topic. If anything, it's more along the along along the lines of what we said 
in our joint presentation, Georg, it, at um, at the summit, right? It's being able to make sure that folks find a welcoming place to, and that they're able to fully contribute to the project. So I don't know what how onboarding is typically defined, but I thought I'll start here with the definition how we see onboarding. That makes sense to me. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, but so someone edited that sentence I just moved up uh, to say well designated that a great oh I, my bad I thought you said we at the beginning so I I'd put I just I did it that way I what about a well-designed onboarding processes? Your well-designed onboarding is findable in
So I'm, I'm not, I, I took the ideas that I saw here in the description and rewrote it a little bit. Um, so that we have one coherent paragraph. And I added a sentence at the bottom to really draw the connection to diversity and inclusion. So what, what do you think of this paragraph we have in description now? It looks pretty comprehensive. Like are, the, in, in the last sentence, um, Georg, are, are you talking about onboarding that, that falls short of these, of, of, of these traits or these um, parameters or requirements. I like that. I'm going to move this. Okay, I, I moved things around a bit. Yeah. Huh, not actually. At least I think it reads well. What do you think about this? Um, and in turn limited its potential membership. Or it's, it's, do you know what I'm trying to say? It's limited its potential number of participants. Mm -hmm. Meaning you're not inviting everybody to the party. You're not, you know what I mean? You're, you're, Okay, I put it at the end. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, how do I say that, I want to say that onboarding, poor onboarding is poor onboarding, fine, but it becomes a problem when 
there are certain demographic people of certain demographics who just don't feel welcome, don't feel invited. Don't mm -hmm. feel. That's the idea that I have in my head. Yeah. Um, uh, it's not pretty how I said it. When maybe when not all people are invited or um, how about that? Sure. Don't feel invited. Um, uh, how about invited or encouraged to contribute or participate since you have contributors earlier on in the sentence? Yeah, I, I think that works. I think it gets at the heart of what we want to say. Yeah. Okay. So shall we move on to the objectives? I think description reads tight. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I, I moved on to the uh, objectives. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> So there's uh, two different things here in objectives that we should differentiate. One is the objective of onboarding, which we already covered in the description of what onboarding is, and the objectives of measuring onboarding for DNI. And I think this section should be about the objectives of measuring DNI in onboarding. Yeah. So something like the goal of this to make life easier to any newcomer approaching the community, which I think you have highlighted, Nicole. Yeah. That is something we already cover in the description about what onboarding, what onboarding is. So I think right. we should move it here. Yeah, and what I said over here was to make it easier to assimilate and begin to contribute, and that's also above. So I think you're right. I or, think, yeah. or we can rewrite it. The objective of measuring 
DNI and onboarding is to evaluate um, how welcoming and inclusive onboarding materials and processes are identifying uh, what do I want to say here? Identifying discrepancies or biases or Yeah, so I think what you're trying to say is when you say how welcoming and inclusive, here's where the list of, um, here's where that list of traits comes in, right? So that's what you're evaluating for, those list of traits how well the onboarding, the existing onboarding material, materials and processes either do or do not um, you know, serve, serve those traits, right, or, or comply with those, tra <clears throat> those traits. And then by identifying how well they do or don't exhibit those traits, you can then it then helps you to pinpoint areas that you can improve to then improve your onboarding. Right? So first you've got to identify the issue. You do that by right by saying, okay, how well are we how well do our existing materials and processes exhibit being welcoming and all of that list of traits? but you still haven't solved the issue yet. Now you've just pinpointed, you've pinpointed the issue. Now you actually have to solve it, right? Now you, you have to, so, but that, that's your first step is identifying areas of improvement. Then you take the action to improve it and that in turn improves your onboarding. So how about this? Okay, so the objective is to evaluate how welcome inclusive the onboarding material and process are. We specify that we're looking at the traits and how they are observed differently by people of different demographics. And then we say identifying the shortfalls, we can then start improving the onboarding. Yeah. Well, it, 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 you pinpoint areas, right, exactly. It, it puts you on the road to improving your onboarding, but you, you first have to pinpoint the issues, then you actually have to take the action to fix those issues. Meaning, do you need to rewrite the onboarding or you know, rewrite documents, or is there a gap? in your onboarding processes that you've identified that you then have to, you know, fill that gap or, you know, what have you identified as the issue? So, and then, and then you actually need to take the action to fix it. So what it does, I guess, is you know, it, it guides it guides you to improving. Um, it guides you to improving your onboarding, but in and of itself, it doesn't improve your onboarding. 
Yeah. Right. You, you, there's action you need to take if right. you find that you're falling short in some area. And you do that. You evaluate that by, yeah. So I put actions specifically here in can help to determine which actions can be taken to improve the onboarding. Yeah. <sighs> okay, we yeah. are out of time. I don't feel fully comfortable about deleting this last this paragraph that was here before, but I'll leave it. And then yeah. Yeah. I wish you all a good rest of your day and I'm going to close the meeting. You too. Thank you. Yes, thank you for your time and input today. Yeah. Okay. All right. Have a great week. Okay. Bye-bye, Nicole. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.